Hey everyone, I hope you had a good weekend and I hope you went out for Global Big Day. It was Global Big Day on Saturday and here at the station we recorded 103 species. So we broke the 100 mark, which was our goal. And there was a lot of rain, but overall we all got a few lifers so we can't complain. It was really a fun day. So the topic for the day is attracting and photographing birds in your backyard. Over on Instagram I did a little poll and I wanted to see if you guys wanted to watch this video or if you wanted me to go out and find salamanders. The majority chose this one, but I'll also do a salamander video hopefully later on in the week. Salamanders are great, so I just, I really wanted to make a little video on them. And I haven't seen any here in Central America, so I, I just, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna try to find them. So stay tuned for that video. So the main theme for this video is really setting yourself up for success. There's no guarantee when it comes to wildlife photography, but there are a few things you could do to help your odds. I think for wildlife conservation and bird conservation as a whole, it all starts in your backyard. It's this nice open space, you can do whatever you want with it, and you can basically create a little mini sanctuary for some of these animals. So moving forward, I think it's a really good idea not only to set up your backyard to get good photos, but also to do it just for the well-being of the animals. So let's get started on part one, attracting birds to your yard. I think the most obvious answer to attracting birds to your yard is just put up a feeder. And although that's part of it, you wanna think how you can really benefit the bird. If you think about the general feeding cycle of the bird, it'll usually fly into your yard, feed on dry seed, and right after it'll search for water. So it'll fly off, then it'll keep coming back and it'll do that back and forth for a couple hours until it's really hot during midday. And then it'll kind of search for somewhere to perch and rest for the hot afternoon. So if you wanna hit the three most important things that all animals need, you'll need food, water, and shelter. And if you combine all these three, what you're doing is you're creating habitat. And that's the most important things that birds need is habitat. Providing food will attract birds to your yard, but creating habitats will keep birds in your yard. And there's a really big difference. So if you're creating the right habitat, you'll get a wide variety of behavioral shots as well. You'll get mating shots, nesting shots, feeding, drinking, bathing, all these different types of shots that you might not get otherwise. So think about really creating this habitat. So these are the six steps that I use to attract birds back home in North America and here in Central America. Let's get into it. You might think that this is common sense, but if you're going through the trouble of changing your yard and adding elements, just like this woodpecker post over here, you wanna make sure that you're taking advantage of that good light. You know, you have to dig holes and add things in the ground. And if you're doing that and you're going through all that effort, make sure you're in the right area in your yard. So just wake up early in the morning, see where the sun's rising roughly. What you wanna do is position all these different bird attractants in your yard in the right spot so that when you actually go to photograph them, you'll have that nice golden hour light. So set yourself up for success and place everything in the perfect spot. And while you're placing everything, be mindful of your backgrounds. So something like this, you see I have a nice green foliage background. Don't put something you actually want to photograph the birds on in front of a fence or anything like that. Or if you do, make sure it's far enough away that the background will be nice and blurred and you won't notice it's a fence. But don't plant everything and then say, oh gosh, I have to move everything because the background sucks. So be mindful of your backgrounds. It can really make or break your photos. It's not just about planting trees and flowers, it's about really diversifying. So get things that bloom in early spring, summer and fall, and that'll just keep a constant steady flow of birds coming into your yard. And the most important part is plant native plants. Those are the ones that are struggling in the wild, they're getting overtaken by invasives and exotic plants. There's quite a few resources online telling you exactly what you can plant in your zone and area. So take a look into that, you'll be really glad that you did. The wildlife thanks you. So there's two options when it comes to providing water for birds. First one is a bird bath and the second one is a pond. The easier of the two options is the bird bath just because it's cheaper, it's easier to maintain and it also is high enough off the ground that it protects from house cats. The pond however is more expensive and more work but at the same time it's a lot more natural and you won't only be helping birds by building a pond but you'll also be helping local wildlife. So you'll usually see frogs and salamanders and then rabbits and squirrels coming in drinking. So creating a pond is a lot more work, but at the same time, you're gonna be helping a lot more wildlife. What we built here was basically, if you look here, you can see it was actually a pipe. And we noticed on the surface of the ground, there was a lot of water building up. So instead of just closing the pipe and fixing it, we repaired it, but then we also dug around it and created this little pond. So we filled it with water and now we have a few mosquito fish in there. All birds need water and it's the universal thing that'll attract them. When we first set this up, I had that pipe running and it was filling up the water 
and within the first 10 minutes of having this pond running we had a yellow warbler fly in so you can see it's a really powerful method especially if you have running water if you're planning to build a pond the most important thing is to make sure that you have these nice gradient slopes so you don't want it to be too steep because that'll impede birds and other wildlife to actually get in the pond and bathe and eat and everything so just make sure that you make these nice edges and that'll definitely help attract more wildlife So you're gonna love this tip if you're the one who does yard work at your house. Instead of collecting things like branches and leaves and throwing them out, what you actually wanna do is maybe rake them towards one side of the yard, probably the one that you don't use most. Just create these little brush piles. And what that does is it creates great habitat for insects. And if you have something like that, you'll be attracting more robins, flycatchers, warblers. I had a ton of birds that aren't very common to a backyard show up solely because I've done this. Especially when birds are fueling up for migration, you really want to keep these things in your yard. They'll get a lot of insects and grubs and worms underneath, and that's the fuel that they'll use to migrate. So do yourself a favor, do less yard work, and help the birds. If you don't have many trees in your yard, you might be restricting the amount of birds that can actually come and visit. Birds don't really feel safe. They usually won't come in and land. If you want something easy, go out and buy those four or five foot tall cedar shrubs and those ones are really easy to plant, they're really easy to acquire and that'll be a nice little stepping stone to getting birds to move into your yard. And if you want to provide shelter for nesting, what you can always do is attach birdhouses to some trees in your yard and if you don't have, just get a long post and attach the birdhouse to that. Providing good shelter will help the birds feel more safe coming into your yard. It'll also protect them from things like house cats and other potential predators. Once you've done all the previous steps, then it's time to add the bird feeders. So as I said before, you'll put up something like dry bird food on the left over there. So we usually put something like sunflower seeds and we also set up hummingbird feeders. For the hummingbird feeders, the ratio is usually four parts water to one part sugar. What I like to do is usually dilute it a little bit more. So I do one part sugar to about five or six parts water. And then the reason why people use this ratio is just because you don't want the feeders to compete with native flowers. So you always want the hummingbirds to still visit the flowers, but every so often they'll stop by and get some nectar in your backyard. We also set up this fruit feeding post. It's a really genius idea. I took it from Greg Bosco. I'll put the link down below so you guys can build it yourself if you're interested. But all it is is basically a wooden post. You drill some PVC pipes in, and then you just stick false perches. And then above the PVC pipes, you'll just add a couple nails where you can put in fruit. For North America, it would probably be something like oranges for Orioles. Down here in the tropics, it's mostly bananas. So what the idea is, is once the birds come down to feed, they'll land on these bare branches, and that's when you would basically take your photo. So you just get these nice clean perches, nothing too distracting, and it's a really great idea. I really love the concept and the design, so take a look at it too if you're interested. Once you've set all of this up, you've really created a nice foundation to attract birds into your yard. As time goes on, it'll only get better and better. So the first couple of years might be a little bit slower, not necessarily for the birds that visit the feeders. For some of the other species that aren't usually found in a backyard, it could be a little bit longer. As your trees grow and your fruit productivity increases, you're just gonna get more and more species. It's also important to play around a bit. You know, every area is a little bit different, so see what works, see what doesn't, and just mess around with it. So once you have all this set up, it's time for part two, photographing the birds. Backyard bird photography purchase is the most effective thing you can do. So I came back here to this woodpecker tree. You'll never see a bird just gun it from two miles away and land in your yard. What birds usually do is, before actually coming in and landing, They'll use a lot of different intermediate perches. So say for example, they're coming from your neighbor's house. They'll either land on the fence or the power line and they'll look in. And if you give birds a perching option before landing to your feeder, majority of the time they'll actually use it. It's a lot safer for them. They feel more comfortable doing it. And that's when you can get a portrait of them on the branch. So what you can do is you just go around, you find any fallen branch, You'll pick it up and just plant it in the ground. You want it to be relatively high, you don't want it to be too low. You also want a nice size range. So think about it, if you're attracting something as small as a hummingbird, you wanna have a perch that fits the hummingbird's foot size. You want it to be comfortable for them so they'll actually land. And if you're going up to something as big as a woodpecker coming in your yard, you want something like this. Nice and thick, they'll land on it. And check this out. So not only will you get woodpeckers landing on a branch like this, they'll actually start excavating. 
So you see there's a couple woodpecker holes there and there. So for something that was just gonna rot on the ground, I brought it up here and it's providing habitat for woodpeckers. Another thing that I noticed with perches is especially if you have a backyard that has a lot of bird traffic, when the feeders are full, the birds will usually be landing on these perches. So there's a tremendous amount of opportunity for good photos. You can get the birds landing on the branch, you can get them flying off, you can get them bickering at each other. What all of this is about is just increasing your chances of success while creating beneficial bird habitat. So set up perches everywhere, see which ones work, see which ones don't, and change them out often so you don't always have the same branch in every photo. And put them everywhere, put them right over a fruiting shrub, put them right over a pond, right next to the feeders, everywhere, and that'll increase your chances of getting a great photo. Tip number two is watch your backgrounds. I said it earlier in the video, you don't wanna have your entire setup and then be thrown off by the background. Make sure there's no fences or chairs or anything like that in your background and really position everything in a way that's appealing for your photos. What I like to do back home is set up some of these false perches and I'll just take out my camera and take a few test shots and see if I like the background, if I'm too close, too far from something and really adjust. So what I suggest is don't just stick something in the ground and hope it's gonna be nice when the birds actually show up take a lot of test shots, play around with everything and just be as prepared as possible for when the birds show up. Depending what camera and lens you're using, it'll also change how far you need to be from something to have a nice clean background. So something like a 300 millimeter, you'll need to be a lot closer than something like a 600 millimeter. The nice thing about doing this in your backyard is you get to do what you want, when you want. And it's a lot of work initially to get everything set up and in the right spot, but long term, it'll really benefit your photography. And the last step to improving your backyard photography is have somewhere to hide. What this means is have something like a hunting blind or a photo blind, or even just photograph the birds from inside your house. If all your perches and all your feeders are close enough to your house, you can probably get some pretty good photos from inside. What we use here is basically there's a nice trellis here so the birds don't see you when you're inside. And when you're looking out, you can just stick your camera right through. You can photograph the hummingbirds, anything in the pond. So it's really a nice little camouflage. If you don't have any of these options and you want to do something similar, what I suggest is place an object where you're planning to photograph. So say for example, I want to photograph right here. What I would do is set up something like a chair or anything around that size and I would just keep it there in one place. So when you're actually ready to go out and photograph, birds are used to having something in this area. Also wearing something like camo, t-shirts, pants, caps. So just think of things like that. The less visible you are, the more likely the bird is actually gonna land and feed. So there it is. That's my guide for photographing and attracting birds to your backyard. If you think I missed anything, leave it down below. I'd love to hear other strategies of attracting birds to your yard. As always, thank you for stopping by. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.